In this video, seven driving myths busted that you really need to look out for. And make sure you watch till the end because the last one is surprisingly common and catches lots of people out and is fairly serious. Myth number one, you've just bought the vehicle, so it's okay that you don't yet have insurance or an MOT whilst driving the vehicle home. This is wrong because you need to have both insurance and an MOT for the road to be on a road or other public place. You'll be convicted of driving without insurance and without an MOT if you drive this vehicle home without getting it first. Just having bought the vehicle is absolutely not an excuse in this situation. Myth number two that catches a lot of people out. You have your own insurance, therefore you're entitled to drive any other vehicle that you like, such as your friend's or a relative's vehicle. This, for the most part, is now a myth. Whilst it used to be the case that it was standard on insurance policies that you could drive any vehicle, now you absolutely must check that this is part of your policy before you jump into anyone else's vehicle and drive it away. Obviously with their permission. Because if this scenario is not covered within your insurance policy, then you will not be insured to drive that other vehicle. Then, obviously, you will be driving that vehicle without insurance, which is an offence for which you could be prosecuted. Insurance policies have changed a great deal over the last few years, so I would absolutely encourage all of you to check very carefully what is included within your driving insurance policy. And as an aside, with certain modern vehicles, you also need to ensure that your vehicle is tracked at all times. Otherwise, you'll find a clause in your insurance policy to say that they will not cover you in the event of a theft or collision because your vehicle wasn't tracked. And if I may interrupt the flow just for a moment and ask you a favor in exchange for all this free legal guidance you get on this channel, I've been checking my statistics recently and I noticed that 60% that watch this channel are not subscribed. Many of you think it doesn't matter because you watch it anyway, but it really does matter. It matters to me and more importantly, it matters to the YouTube algorithm, which will spread my channel to more viewers so I can help more people to understand law and demystify the law and help people solve their problems. So please hit that subscribe button right now, the bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And for now, Back to the video. Myth number three, you have medication which is authorized and prescribed by your doctor. Therefore, it's perfectly fine for you to take it and jump in your car and drive. This is also a myth, potentially, because there are certain drugs that you cannot drive with at all. They are proscribed substances, that's proscribed with an O, and there are some of them that there are specific limits above which you are not allowed to drive. Lots of these that catch people out are antidepressants and certain types of painkillers. Again, you have to absolutely check what you are taking, how much of it you are taking, and check the limits as to whether you're allowed to drive with those drugs in your system. Falling foul of these rules is a drug drive offence which is very similar to drink driving and carries severe penalties. Myth number four is the 10% plus two rule. People believe that if you're speeding, you can only be convicted if you are driving at 10% plus two miles an hour over the requisite speed limit. That is a complete myth. There is nowhere in legislation that makes this a mandatory rule for the police to follow when prosecuting you for speeding, or the courts for that matter. It is, however, guidance that's adopted around various parts of the country, and there are certain different limits that different forces apply, but again, they are merely discretionary. They allow the police some discretion whether to prosecute you or not, whether to give you a fixed penalty or not, and whether to refer your matter to court or not. The absolute speed limit is the absolute speed limit. If the limit is 30, you should do no more than 30. If the limit is 40, you should do no more than 40, and so on. The 10% plus two rule is a complete myth. Myth number five is about taxis and seatbelts. Lots of people seem to believe that you don't have to wear a seatbelt if you're in a taxi. Now there are two types of exemptions, one for licensed taxis and one for private hire, but they don't apply to you unless you are the one driving the licensed taxi or the private hire vehicle. Taxi and private hire drivers are exempt from wearing seatbelts under regulation six of the motor vehicles wearing of seatbelts regulations of 1993, providing in the case of a licensed taxi, it's being used for seeking for hire, answering a call for hire, or carrying a passenger for hire. Or in the case of a private hire vehicle, it is being used to carry a passenger 
for hire. And at all of the times, they should be wearing a seatbelt. But this exemption does not apply to passengers, although many people seem to believe that it does. In fact, any person over the age of 14 must be wearing a seatbelt and are responsible for their own seatbelt, otherwise they're committing a criminal offence. If they are under 14, then the driver is responsible for that passenger to be wearing a seatbelt. If not, then the driver commits an offence as well. Myth number six is back to MOTs. You've had an MOT on your vehicle. It passed with flying colours or with some minor works. Either way, you have a valid MOT certificate. So the myth is that you're good till next year. That's also not true because the MOT certificate is simply a point in time at which the vehicle was tested and checked. Yes, your vehicle does have to have a valid MOT certificate at all times whilst on a road or other public place. However, it could also fall to be dangerous if something else happens to that vehicle. For example, the windscreen gets cracked or smashed. It would normally fail an MOT and it needs to be repaired, regardless of when the MOT is due. Likewise with your tyres, likewise with anything else that the MOT would ordinarily check, they are only matters that are checked on a regular annual basis so that you have a valid MOT certificate to show that that vehicle was safe at that point in time. And the reason for it being tested every year is to make sure that you get it tested every year to make sure that you're keeping the vehicle up to standard. However, it is your responsibility to keep the vehicle up to that standard throughout the rest of the year as well. And if stopped by the police and something is wrong with your vehicle, even down to the wipers or the tyres or the windscreen or the lights or the wing mirrors or anything else that is essential for the safety of that vehicle, the police can order you to get this repaired at the local garage and then produce the confirmation slip that you've paid for the repairs and the repairs have been done at your local police station. They will usually do this along with your other documents that you also are required to provide upon request by the police. This might come about when the police stop you under a section 163 stop where you are required to stop your vehicle, you are required to produce your driving license and insurance and it's an offence not to do so. Although it is a specific defence to that charge if you do provide them within seven days, commonly known as a producer. But as I said, if there is a problem with your vehicle in between those MOT dates, you need to ensure that your vehicle is roadworthy and that work is carried out. If you are stopped by the police and the vehicle is in a dangerous condition, you may be prosecuted for that as well, irrespective of the fact that you have an MOT certificate. The seventh and final myth for this video is back to insurance. That is that if you have an insurance certificate, you are insured and you are good regardless of whether you cancel the insurance. Most of you, I hope, wouldn't think about doing this. However, it does catch out a lot of students, particularly international students who believe that once they've got the insurance certificate that's perfectly fine. However, if they stop paying for the insurance or they cancel the insurance, that insurance certificate is no longer valid because there will be various terms and conditions within that insurance policy that will void that insurance. Having the certificate in hand is not a guarantee that the vehicle is insured. So if this is something that you've been told or that you believe or you think is some kind of loophole to get insurance without paying for it, think again. This is a complete myth and if you cancel your payments and you don't keep up those payments, your insurance will be voided at discretion or even automatically by your insurance company. So those are the seven myths for this video. Let me know in the comments which one of those, if any, surprised you. Which one of those did you believe? Which one or several of these do your friends think are true? Whereas in fact they are merely myths. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.